to what the US the Ukrainian embassy here is doing. Uh, we, uh, we are, you know, not only representatives of Ukraine here in the US, but we are the bridge for all the cooperation that uh, we have in all spheres. And as you know, economic diplomacy is a, a very uh, pr priority that has received a new life with President Zelensky clearly stating it among one of the top priorities for all embassies. And uh, we are working really hard for our embassy to be um, one of the pilot projects and to show the results and to show how actually this can be uh, developed in, in relatively uh, short period of time. I would like to, I'm, I'm very happy to see uh, one of our exemplary honorary councils here. Pani uh, Irina, it, it's always a pleasure to be and, and working with you every day. We only have nine, but this is one of the also my priorities during my tenure here is to have more. So the more energetic people like Irina, we can find who are Ukrainians by birth or Ukrainians by choice. Uh, we would be very happy to, to get the recommendations, interview people, talk to them, and if, you, if they are willing and capable to have more honorary counsel in the U.S. to represent us and, and develop this cooperation, especially the economic one. Uh, Cargill, MasterCard, buyers, thank you very much for being such a good uh, employers in Ukraine, for paying taxes, for being the integral part of uh, uh, Ukrainian development and business climate improvement. Uh, I really hope that uh, you know you would expand and that uh, despite some of the uh, challenges of working in the environment which has uh, been developed, uh, I'm sure that uh, as early comers you will be uh, you know the integral part of our business community and flourish in Ukraine. Uh, so just as a brief opening, I mean, uh, I'm very glad to, to have today with us many uh, businesses who either are present in Ukraine or have interest in Ukraine. And, you know, my message today is that, uh, you know, we are approaching 30th anniversary of Ukraine this year. Uh, of course, it's the last 30 years out of the thousands years that we have uh, of uh, our history as uh, Ukrainian nation. Uh, and uh, it's time to celebrate, but it's also time to review what we have done right during the past 30 years and where we need to double our efforts. And I believe that economic development, investment, investor attraction, uh, business and investment climate development is something where we've done a lot, but we have to do more. Uh, and there is still very un untapped potential in Ukraine in pretty much every sphere uh, which you take a look to increase productivity, to increase the uh, returns and investments, thus making Ukraine a very interesting point uh, and country uh, to be on every investor's map. Now, uh, seven years, so it's the eighth year of uh, after the revolution of dignity, but it's also the eighth year of war. And I know this is something that you hear about Ukraine more, and this is something that, of course, we work a lot because, you know, it, it's important for us to get back our territories, to get back the, the Crimea. But despite the fact that our brave soldiers are fighting on the front, despite the fact that our citizens are fighting every day, Ukraine is open for business. And I believe the more business we can have, the more uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian international uh, and especially American companies, which would be uh, my biggest goal, uh, that will open their, their uh, you know, product production facilities or, or service uh, companies in Ukraine, the, 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 the faster we will be able to complete the reforms that we need to complete. Because again, you know, the, the, the soft uh, reforms or the low hanging fruits, as, as we call them, we've done them in 2014, 2015. They, they were hard to do. I mean, all, all of these reforms are really hard. But now everything that we left to be fully implemented, like judicial reform, uh, like land reform, which will start in a couple of days, you know, the land, the land market will, will uh, begin the, the procedure of opening in Ukraine. These are major reforms that require not only legislative changes, which are taken in some of the cases and are still being discussed uh, on the other, but also, also uh, require a lot of behavioral change and 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 a lot of work, because you know again, all of you who are here in the United States know that even though this is the country with the rule of law, 
uh, but you also know how much time it took this country to actually build this and how much uh, effort it took from the citizens to defend it and demand it and protect it and also work together with judges, prosecutors, you know, police, people who are also part of the part, part of the community. So this is the process that we are, we, we started on this way. I'm positive that our path to European Union, our path to NATO, our path to the West, if we may say so, it's already in our hearts, it's already in our constitution. Uh, but again, we are a democracy. And this is something that we Ukrainians not only value a lot, this is, I think, freedom is, is in our genes, you know, and uh, uh, we see, unfortunately, now how many countries uh, around us, our neighbors who we believe deserve to be democratic, deserve to be free countries. But unfortunately, we see like in Belarus situation uh, develops in, in, in quite opposite direction. But at the same time, you know, democracy comes also with responsibility and with uh, uh, necessity to discuss everything with stakeholders. So I know that sometimes business is not uh, fully um, happy with how the reforms are implemented. They're not quick enough. They're not direct enough. They're not straightforward enough or uh, you know, continuous, but that, that's how it happens in democracy because, it, you know, in, in democracy, you have to talk to the stakeholders and sometimes there are different ideas discussed and sometimes you need to take a step, you know, sideways or even backwards in order to then uh, rethink and evaluate and go faster uh, to, to move forward. So with that uh, short introduction, because I think we have uh, such, a, such a great panel and uh, I would be uh, look forward to discussing lots of issues and answer maybe some of the questions more in detail, so not to dominate with my opening speech. I would like to once again, uh, Morgan, thank you for the for all the efforts to bring in this wonderful group of people together, uh, for people who are listening to us at this webinar, and um, invite everyone to use this opportunity to think what more we can do in Ukraine and uh, what new businesses or expanded business, extended businesses uh, we can start planning from day after today. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, for those comments. Uh, the U.S.-Ukraine Business Council and of all of our members, our number one goal always has been is to promote Ukraine as a place to do business. And our second goal is to work with Ukraine to make it an easier and better place to do business so we will attract more international investors. We're very, very pleased that the president has announced here several times that economic diplomacy is to be a much higher priority for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and that you're not just a uh, political ambassador or foreign affairs ambassador, government relations uh, ambassador, you're an economic ambassador, which, which we think is a, is a great move on the part of the president and to give higher priority to economic and business development in Ukraine, which we've always thought is the first, second, third. And we just saw last week where your new economic strategy that was posted for 2030, you want to raise uh, investment from 420 million last year to 3 billion this year and 15 billion by 2025. Well, it's going to take all of us working together to make that happen. But we're pleased that that's uh, high on the priority. So let's first talk about what we're hearing from U.S. companies. U.S. companies want everybody to know that they're invested in Ukraine. They've been there, a lot of them, for 20, 25 years. They're not going anywhere. They're going to stay. And they have opportunities for a lot more investments. So one of the first things we want to say is that when you're going to work on increasing economic development in Ukraine, let's not just talk about new companies. Let's talk about how to work with all the present companies that are there. We think that probably 80% of investments and new jobs will come from companies that are already there. And many times they get stuck in small little deals and there's no way to resolve them. And that's where the embassy comes in. And that's where they're happy about your new message, the president's new message, that the embassy can be more of help in helping solve some of these problems that slow down investments. But when we start talking about U.S. companies, what we hear from them, let's be very tangible and specific at first. The number one thing we're hearing from them now is they want to be helpful in any way possible about COVID vaccines. They're very concerned about their employees not uh, having any indication now when they might get vaccines. 
They'd like to have vaccines for all their contractors. They'd like to have vaccines for many of the small villages where they work. They're willing to buy them. They're willing to implement it. And they're willing to do anything possible. They know it's been a big problem to get supplies of vaccines to Ukraine. So their number one question that we've had, no question about it, is they're concerned to, to expand their business operations to get things back to normal. Their employees, their contractors, their villages, they need COVID vaccines. So they're willing to help in any way possible. We think the United States ought to be doing more. The United States ought to be helping Ukraine more, that's for sure. So any comments from you about this very serious issue of uh, reducing the impact of COVID? Thank you. Yes, this is this is the number one priority for the for, for our president and for everyone working here. And the embassy is involved in all of the discussions on how we can uh, get more vaccines through either different TA programs or the funds uh, like COVAX and Gavi, but also through direct purchases. Because as you know, you know it wasn't um, uh, easy even to buy the vaccines, especially until recently when a lot of countries had the expert uh, uh, restrictions. Uh, the situation is becoming a little bit easier now with uh, uh, some countries like the U.S. showing exemplary a quick vaccination and uh, definitely seeing that they do have some access uh, doses which they can make available for other countries. Uh, so we are working uh, uh, quite actively with our colleagues here on uh, uh, trying to get as much out of this, uh, uh, you know, to participate in this redistribution, so to say, of the of the vaccines and also working directly with the companies, the, the producers uh, and, and distributors. Um, any help from, from businesses who are willing to help and participate because sometimes, you know, like the, the, not on vaccines, but on other, for example, uh, medical supplies, we do have some businesses that uh, for a long time cooperate now with the embassy and help us either deliver them uh, to Ukraine when we settle all the bureaucratic, uh, you know, uh, procedures on, on both sides, on the U.S. and Ukrainian. So whoever, like, I think it would be great if uh, through um, the associations, everyone who is willing to, to help a little bit more from businesses will send us the contacts. And I will put in contact with our key person here at the embassy who's in charge of, of this program. And we can see how we can actually, you know, join forces in order to make it quicker. I mean, it's definitely the priority of the government and of the president to get as many vaccines as possible so that we can vaccinate faster. I mean, uh, the, the, the situation with vaccination is still very difficult in Ukraine. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, let us know what we can do. And we're all urging the U.S. government to do more for Ukraine in this area. It's very critical to get business back to normal and get things back on track and protect the uh, population of Ukraine. Uh, the second question is, they're always very interested in, in terms of being an economic diplomat. Uh, can you tell us anything more about what you plan to do to work with U.S. companies and to try to get them to uh, uh, invest more and expand their operations in Ukraine? We appreciate the fact that you've already asked us to turn in a reports from 25 companies that you're now reviewing with you and your colleagues in Ukraine. Uh, this is a good step because they all have these little sticky problems and things that, that really cause big impact uh, to stop their operations. So they'd like to know a little more. What can they expect from you? What can they expect from the embassy in terms of uh, being a, a facilitator, an implementer, a communicator with the authorities in Kiev to help resolve issues so the present companies can expand? Any more details from you about what U.S. companies can expect from you and the embassy? As you rightfully said, in order to attract new, or we have to convince the existing ones to expand and continue working in Ukraine. And, you know, I, in 2017, I, I, as the government commissioner for investments, I have created Ukraine Invest Back Home specifically for these purposes, to actually address the issues of the exist, existing investors that we have and be this you know, governmental office that deals with investors. So again, the embassy here, uh, we are at the front of this uh, here in the United States, but we are a small part of the large team Ukraine that stands behind us. And our key role here is first to, to communicate more. So, so American investors 
uh, uh, can expect, and I'm sure some of them already noticed it, that uh, we are available 24-7. We are willing to meet, discuss, and hear the, the American investors. Please come to us and bring either directly or through the association all the issues and uh, suggestions uh, that, that you have. Uh, so so it's, it's the increased communication first. Second, we are working very closely with all the offices back home and with the cabinet of ministers. And when I say offices, I mean Ukrainian West, the expert promotion office, the business development ocean, all the infrastructure that supports business activities and, and investment activities back home. So we are willing to, uh, and uh, doing it already, to engage our colleagues in discussions, you know, uh, whether we will be doing it on a company by company basis, or I believe that some of the issues we hear already from a number of companies, kind of the same issues. So maybe we will have some topical discussions on either industries or specific issues that uh, could be addressed. And while some of them are really difficult, to be honest, especially when it deals with the additional legislation, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it requires time. Some issues are, uh, as we saw, you know, if you discuss and find the solution and it's, and it's uh, not a legislative solution, uh, sometimes there are, could be some very quick solutions and, and effective solutions. So uh, we are ready to be here, your, you know, permanent representative, because again, we are here representatives of Ukraine and Ukrainian people, but we are also representative of Ukrainian business. And every American business that works in Ukraine, in my book, is Ukrainian business who I am here to represent. So uh, again, better contacts, more information, more active work and feedback uh, from back home and getting all the people uh, uh, you know, that we need to get into discussing and resolving issues. This is what we will be doing. Now, for that, we will need a lot of your help. Uh, as I used to say in Ukrainian West, help us to help you. So the most specific you can be uh, in your request, and if you can come with proposed solutions uh, together with um, uh, issues that you have, and if these proposed solutions, and I know that the majority of businesses who work in Ukraine have very capable teams on the ground, if these solutions can come not only in a known paper or one pager, which will be clear for me and the team here to understand, but also, you know, please be um, active and uh, um, propose, you know, the, the draft documents, draft resolutions, whatever you can do from your side to, to kind of volunteer to like our honorary councils do and uh, help us to, to, to do it. That will help a lot. That will help to speed up the discussion um, on how we can resolve it rather than discussing the problems. So now we are okay. here. Okay, thank you very much. It's great to hear that uh, openness on the part of the embassy and uh, that you're willing to review those papers and uh, be an advocate for helping resolve the issues which benefits uh, Ukraine greatly from companies that are already there and can easily increase their investments. Let's turn now to the Dean of our Executive Committee, Van Yider from Cargill. Van? Thanks, Morgan. Uh, good morning, Ambassador. Nice to see you. Um, as Morgan said, I work for Cargill, and uh, most people know Cargill is a large agriculture and food company. Um, we've been around for many, many years. We're a private company, 155 years old. Uh, we have over 155,000 employees. We began investing in Ukraine in 1991. Um, we've grown quite a, quite a lot since then. We're primarily in the uh, grain trading, production of vegetable oils and meals, animal feed and financing business, as you may know. We recently also um, invested in a project uh, with MD Cargo, where we built a port in Odessa with, with MD Cargo. In 2014, we lost our Donetsk plant, unfortunately. But all of that to say is Cargo has been an active investor in Ukraine for many, many years. Um, obviously, Ukraine is an agricultural powerhouse in the globe. It's important for food security for the, for the decades ahead for humanity. Uh, Cargill has a role to play in helping Ukraine reach its potential and, and to serve the world. And so we're very committed and happy to be in Ukraine. I've been around the Ukraine um, economic situation and business environment for many, many years. Your role as ambassador is incredibly 
uh, important, as Morgan said. I don't know how many ambassadors I've seen through the, through the years here in, in D.C. since I've been here, but I've seen a variety from, you know, ambassadors who are quite, you know, effective and very um, pro-business and building economic development, and others who uh, were not very uh, committed to that and really didn't care and didn't see that as part of, part of their role. Um, so I, I, I would urge you to, I, and it sounds like you're very much um, going to embrace this, this, this um, opportunity to help U.S. investors. And let me give you an example of why it's important. Companies like ours um, understand that there's going to be problems and issues in markets around the world. Ukraine's not unique in that regard. It happens in the United States. It happens, you know, Cargill has, you know, challenges in every market in the world, if you will. But the key is for the, the local government to be a, a problem solver and, and help find solutions, just like you said, Ambassador. And, and, and it, let me give you a current example we're working through today. Um, in the fall of 2020, there was a, a committee formed in the parliament um, to investigate that fraud in Ukraine, which, as you know, has been a big problem in Ukraine for a long time. Um, apparently, that, that committee changed tack along the way. And, and instead of uh, investigating that fraud, they decided to um, kind of go make aggressive allegations against international companies in the agricultural sector related to the repatriation of uh, foreign exchange on exports. And, and it's been a uh, kind of a frustration for Cargill in particular because um, some years ago, as you, you may recall, I don't know, we, we came to the Ukrainian government with some solutions to the gray market problems. We, we, we kind of identified these issues saying, there's gray market fraud problems. We need, you know, we want to help clean this up. Here's some ideas, here's some uh, uh, laws that could be changed to help it. And, and it didn't really get over the, over the line. And so now four years later, we're kind of fighting this and being accused of the same things we're trying to fix four years ago by this investigative committee. And, and, and this committee has run its course, and, but there's talk that it's going to be um, reinstituted going forward uh, in parliament. And it's just, it's one of those examples of, a, of something that uh, distracts investors like us. It creates management time fighting this. It hurts the brand of the, co the country with boardrooms back, you know, at, at our different boardrooms. And it's, you know, the bureaucracy, if you will, is fighting business investors in this case, rather than supporting them. And so I raise that as just an example where, you know, that's a great example where you and others in the Ukrainian government it's important to find the solutions, like you said. Let's work on the solutions. Let's not be distracted by politics, right? I mean, there's underlying issues why there's allegations going on that are kind of political in nature or whatnot. Um, but we need to move beyond that and find ways to actually promote business investment. And so we're thrilled to have someone of your capability and interest in business and understanding of economics. Um, we need the help. Ukraine needs the help for investors, right? There's enough, you know, challenges, blockages always coming up, right? The example I gave is just one example, right? You know, six months from now, it's, it's going to be something a little different. Now, hopefully five years from now, 10 years from now, instead of five of these happening a year, we have one happening a year, right? 10 years ago, we used to have 12 of these a year. Now we have five of these, you know, three of these a year. We're moving in the right direction. But we've still we've still got to kind of knock these down. So anyway, um, it's it's a pleasure to be on the panel today. Um, happy to have you as the ambassador, and look forward to uh, spending time with you and and solving these issues. So thank you very much, ambassador. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, I know how uh, distracting it can be. I mean, I served as the minister of finance before. Uh, in the ministry since 2015 for five years. And you know, I saw that after the, this impressive fiscal consolidation and bringing the debt down to 50% of GDP from 83, you know, and everything that we have done, which uh, you know, a lot of international partners applauded us, and it was a showcase uh, within the IMF countries how we have done it. Uh, I was then investigated by one of the commissions for initiated by the deputy who's now sanctioned, unfortunately for him. But uh, you know. 
also lots of time to explain that actually what you have done is is building the responsible debt policy rather than some insinuations that you have to respond so uh, again i uh, I, th I think this is the, that is why uh, we need to work use as much as possible all of this infrastructure offices that we have back home in order to actually take these discussions and really, I mean, I know that uh, Cargill, but other ag ag agribusiness companies, especially those who take compliance seriously, they fought for years for actually competition in the sector because that's uh, that affects you more or, or equally as it affects the Ukrainian budget. So I, I hope that we will be able together to work on the solutions and fix them rather than, you know, uh, creating this. Um, let's call them distractions uh, for, 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 for all of the sites. And I, I, I'm positive that, so again, use us in a good sense of that uh, word, you know, provide us with more information about it. We will be very happy to raise these issues, discuss these issues, uh, because again, the, uh, we, we, we know that there is a big potential in uh, Ukrainian agriculture. Wherever you look, we are interested for you to invest more and invest not only in production and uh, export activities, but uh, invest as much as possible into processing. But I also know that for you, in order to be more active there, not only in cargo, but in actually uh, processing and uh, uh, feeding the world with uh, uh, goods on which you can find made in Ukraine label, you need to be sure uh, in, in about the business environment, about the customs and tax policies that you can quickly get it out of the country, export it, and we will be then positive that we can get the money in into the budget uh, in a much larger quantity if we exp export not only grain but export actually the the, the you know uh, processed products. So anyway, we we I know it's not, and I, again I don't want to promise that it's going to be easy that you know, we will discuss today and resolve everything tomorrow. And I'm sure that you have experience in working in many countries and many environments. But we will do everything possible in order to have the honest and direct discussion in order to, to, to start resolving these issues. Also, one of the things that I, that I didn't mention when Morgan asked me how the embassy will participate in it, uh, another thing that we are, you know, Morgan uh, knows about it uh, already, but not everyone knows we spoke a little bit publicly about it. We are also in the process of create, creating the Ukraine house here in DC. It's going to be a Ukraine house that will work in synergy with, with the embassy, close cooperation, but it's not going to be the governmental institution. And we will be also, uh, you know, happy if uh, businesses who are interested in developing this cooperation uh, would participate in supporting the house. We will not be taking the oligarchic money into the into the project. So the more medium-sized uh, businesses or even large businesses, but with uh, a modest medium-sized uh, support so that it's not dominated by anyone would be welcome. And I think, you know, that could be also a very uh, powerful instrument of not only, you know, driving and sharing our Ukrainian narratives here, but also a place kind of home away from home for uh, business, you know, culture people, uh, Ukrainians, but also people who are interested in Ukraine to have a place in Washington, D.C., and also the discussion platform for us to work with everyone here on the Hill. Thank you very much. Let's go on now to Mayor uh, Stephanie, uh, one of the largest companies in the world, very involved in the development of the food system in seeds and in crop protection supplies. Stephanie. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Morgan, and, and thank you, Ambassador. It's it's lovely to be here with you today. And, and you know, Bayer is a large multinational corporation with headquarters both in Germany and in the United States. Um, and we've been around for over 150 years, and our business in Ukraine spans both agriculture and on the healthcare side as well. So we have an active business in pharmaceuticals and in consumer health. Uh, recently, we finished, per, finished building um, and investing $200 million into a seed production facility in the Zhitomyr region in Ukraine. And that is because we believe strongly in the agriculture section of, of Bayer and what it can bring to the country. 
So this is part of our investment in, in Ukraine and what we see as the future of Ukraine. Um, I'm very heartened to hear, you know, how you are thinking about engagement in the United States um, and even, you know, in this Ukraine house and using it as a place where you can bring Congress and engagement there to, you know, build out support um, with bipartisan members of Congress, because I think that is going to be key as you are continuing to um, look towards, you know, making the necessary steps towards reform and building out the continued platforms that are necessary for investment in Ukraine by US companies and multinational companies. Um, I'm also really thinking about what those different levers are going to be as the Biden administration has really articulated um, its four main goals right now, which is COVID, its sustainability, it's, you know, recovery from COVID. Um, and I, I think, you know, what I'm curious about is how you see Ukraine kind of breaking a part of these, um, these goals of the Biden administration and wondering where you see cooperation between the US and the Biden administration in terms of sustainability and climate. And then also specifically with regard to WTO reform um, and thinking specifically about something that is very important for our company across our business platforms, which is innovation. Um, for a number of companies that are looking at investment opportunities and when we make decisions about where to invest and how to invest, innovation policies are a big, big um, decision-making component. And so I know that this has been a long-standing topic of conversation between the U.S. government and Ukraine, and there's been a lot of progress that has been made. Um, there's opportunities between USTR and Ukraine to continue those conversations. Uh, so I'm just curious as to, you know, how you are thinking about approaching those topics as well. So I know I've put a lot out there, but I would be happy to hear your thoughts on any of those conversations. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, those those are, you know, very important and uh, topics of conversation, something that I really like to talk about, actually. I, I will start with the last, with innovations. Because again, uh, we saw... Uh, all the diagnostics of uh, several parts of Ukrainian economy. One of was uh, uh, the comprehensive review by the World Bank of the Ukrainian economy, and you know different type of scenarios. If we progress the way we are, how, at what rate, rate we will, you know, at what year we will catch up with Poland today. Uh, and, and I think you know, even though it's very important to think in that, but if we continue to do things the way we do them. Uh, there is no way we can quickly build what we need to build for our citizens. Actually, a, a, a prosperous country where our citizens have the equal access and participation in the wealth that we all have the fundamentals for. So innovations is the only way for us to leapfrog. And I always, uh, when talking about innovations, uh, uh, talk about these examples that we actually have in our banking system that in 1991, uh, following the, the you know gain, gain you know regaining the independence, uh, we had actually a dilemma what to do with the banking sector, which we got the remains of the Soviet banking system with only the state bank, the savings bank, and the stroy bank, the construction bank, uh, which were not really you know banks in a full meaning of that. You know they were just three uh, institutions servicing the financial needs of either state corporations or, or the citizens. And we had the dilemma what to do, you know, catch up with all this 40, 50, 60 years uh, when we left the civilized uh, financial system uh, or do something different. And I'm very glad that we decided to do something different. So the payment system that we've, we have built and we, you know, skipped, we leapfrogged the whole, you know, check-in, you know, we never had this uh, uh, check-in, you know, tens of years of the check-in accounts like many countries still do, because you know when you evolve, then you have to do it and you have to use what you have. And we have built the payment system, which is still by far, you know, one of the fastest, uh, even though it's already uh, quite old, a payment system. So I think this is the approach that we should 
be taken and this is what the government with the Ministry of Digital Transformation and the strategy that the government is trying to put in other areas. So it's not only about IT or high tech, it's about agrotech, it's about fintech, it's about medtech. So the innovations is kind of the uh, underlying theme in all of the developments and those investors we would like to see first and foremost, because again, yes, our population is also aging and we are not growing in numbers. Now, that is the problem for traditional economies, but it's not a problem for innovative economies, because if you can have the smaller number of people uh, making much, uh, be, being much productive and doing uh, and generating more uh, GDP per person, then, you know, it's not really a problem, right? It's, it's just the situation that you have and uh, you have the benefits and uh, of that situation. So uh, innovations is something that the government is very keen and the president is very keen to to hear about. Um, we would be more than happy to put you in contact if you are not working yet with the vice prime minister, who's the minister of digital transformation. He has a uh, very capable team, uh, good deputies who each are working on, on uh, uh, specific uh, areas of where this digital transformation in general is taking place. I mean, you know, but not all the people here know that we are the first country that actually has the digital passport, which is full equivalent of the normal passport and the driver license. Now, I know there are big issues with security concerns and we have to, and we're working on it and uh, deal with it, but still it's a, it's, it's a, it's a big breakthrough. And uh, we have to use all the young people and all the com good command of math and engineering that we do have in Ukraine in order to build, to use this and build on it. Because again, in, in this century and probably next century, this resource is more important than the black soil, which we are very proud to have 30% of, uh, of, of, of it. So innovations is that's when we are aligned. It's also very important for our security because cybersecurity and you know that Russia is not only attacking us in the East, uh, they are taking us also inside the country and uh, it, it, it's all starting from disinformation to cyber attacks. We actually are experiencing that starting from 2014. So everything that we hear as very loud and unbelievable cases here in, in, in the United States, I mean, we were the testing ground, unfortunately, for them. I mean, in 2014, 2016, we went through massive attacks on our banking system. I mean, I, I was the uh, in the ministry and I was the in the boards of all of the four banks when uh, suddenly on Thursday, you know, virus Petia, uh, made uh, such a huge damage to our to our state-owned banks, and we had we only had three days, you know, the long weekend to to do something about it and take it back up. And I think there is a lot of information that we can share with the West. So uh, this is the area also where we would like to cooperate with with companies. Also, not only I mean we are working a lot with the U.S. government now. We initiated our uh, participation in the cyber flag initiative, where we believe we can not only benefit from, but also with all the information and experience that we have to actually uh, provide a lot for our partners to, to, to be more uh, capable and prepared uh, for all of this. Um, but there is a lot in that area for, for private business to participate in and form the private partner partnerships and work together on it. So, okay. We, we would be happy to do it. And on the climate change, again, um, uh, I think Ukraine with our, you know, Chernobyl experience and with uh, such a huge catastrophe that we also, uh, regardless of all the governmental, Soviet governmental lies, regardless of how the situation was completely mishandled by the, you know, KGB then, and, you know, they still use the same approaches, obviously. But I think we have, we're turning it now into the, sign of not only resiliency but also of the revival and i think on climate on the alternative energy and when it's not only renewable but also the biofuel everything uh, this is uh, i mean the waste management total untapped uh, uh, large sphere so again that that's where we would be welcome welcoming any business that would have interest in those put you in contact with the relevant authorities uh, please work with the business associations communities and we will be here to help on those Thank you very much. Uh, a company that's been fighting the old Soviet regulations on 
on money and all that for a long time and helping bring Ukraine into the modern world for a cashless society, of course, has been MasterCard. Uh, I remember they fought and fought and fought, and every year we, they move a little ahead, but there's still a lot of problems to moving Ukraine into the modern world in a, terms of a cashless society. Let's turn to Sarah English and all the work that MasterCard's done to move Ukraine forward. Sarah? Thank you, Morgan. And I want to just thank Morgan, the U.S. Uh, UBC staff, for really supporting MasterCard and providing real value to our business in Ukraine. And Madam Ambassador, it's lovely to meet you, and I welcome you to Washington, and I really hope we can meet in person soon. Um, I can tell that you are quite versed in the financial space, so I, I look forward to some conversations. A little bit about MasterCard. We've been in Ukraine for more than two decades, and we've really seen our business steadily growing, and the regulatory environment actually uh, becoming more open. Now, we, as you know, we work very closely with a lot of the state-owned banks, as well as the privately held banks and merchants large and small. But cash is our biggest competitor. And I know we've been working very closely with the national bank. Um, and we've seen actually during the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown that the population in Ukraine's payment habits has really grown in terms of favoring electronic payments. And in fact, we've seen in the last year an increase of over 10% um, to electronic payments. And interestingly, most of those, half of those, trans, those cashless transactions are actually done with contactless or NFC technology, a really more high-tech technology than card. And over the last few years, we've invested over 25 million euros in the development of Ukrainian social projects. And we believe there's really a lot more opportunity to grow and, and grow our share of non-cash payments. But as you know, and as you've stated, you know, the, the shadow economy is really one of the key threats to the Ukraine financial security. And some, uh, based on a study that we conducted with Ernest and, and Young, as well as the National Bank, shadow transactions comprise one fourth of Ukraine's GDP. And these obstacles create really hindrances towards economic and social quality and really slows down the creation of a, a transparent financial sector, from everything from tax collection to financial cybersecurity threats. And we've been really pleased working with the central bank on the national strategy for the development of financial markets. And as we know, it lists cashless transactions as one of its top priorities. And we feel that working together with uh, on financial inclusion programs, you know, growing the digital economy, you mentioned digital ID um, as well as cyber. We, these are the things that MasterCard is working on throughout the world on projects. And we are happy to partner with you and support you. And I just want to say that I mentioned that some of the regulatory constraints have gotten better in recent years. And we've, we've actually come recently to, up into a, a situation regarding fees. And we just feel that we've come to a compromise but we feel that these, these rates and these applies should be applied equally and fairly, not only on US payment companies, but broadly toward the other competitive uh, partners that we have in the market. And I just look forward to working with you and, and really, you know, like I said before, the, the relationship we have with the National Bank is really important. And we, we, we hopefully are seen as a partner to help inform and, and really help transform the financial sector in Ukraine and as well as working with small businesses. So I really look forward to working with you and I hope we can spend some time while you're in Washington. Um, thank you very much. It would be really, um, you know, uh, the, the Minister of Finance inside me didn't die completely. So it's still there. And I, I'm always happy to talk about the financial sector. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a very important subject that you have touched, the cashless uh, move to the cashless economy. And again, this is one of the uh, items uh, which I have mentioned before, that it's not only legislative and uh, change, it's a behavioral change. Um, uh, it was not easy in, in a lot of countries and because people are very uh, concerned, especially now in the era of electronic uh, dominance everywhere. Uh, concerned about their privacy and about the and you know so so uh, but also you know in Ukraine you, I, I think we have to understand that you know before this uh, regaining our independence in 1991 we had centuries of Ukrainians fighting for the for 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 the statehood but for for centuries the state was somebody else so you know 
in a, in a strange way, you know, this uh, uh, attachment to to cash. Sometimes it's also attachment to this independence, and uh, plus you you know the 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 crises that we went through, and especially very difficult 2014, 2015, when people have uh, lost uh, money in the bank during the banking. Uh, a crisis again. It's, I'm, I'm, it's it's a good that the majority of people uh, had the deposits below the the guaranteed sum, and they they did not lose them. They uh, in in a couple of months after uh, the banks were put into administration, they have taken them. But lots of businesses and lots of uh, entrepreneurs and individual entrepreneurs have lost. So this all factors make it uh, a more challenging job for the NBU for the. For the central bank, for the Ministry of Finance, and for uh, all the business that is fighting for cashless, but uh, I, I think the progress is there, as you said. So we just we need to work more. We need to explain more to people. Uh, there is a big public uh, uh, information campaign uh, issue there. Uh, but again, I think you know the national bank is one of the institutions which was built as the independent, capable institution to, during the past. Uh, uh, seven years, and I think uh, we hear from everyone here, but also back home, that uh, you know it uh, uh, serves not only as a uh, resilient and capable regulator, but also as the uh, driver of some of these positive changes, including the, the promotion uh, of cashless and deregulating everything on the one hand, but also uh, making supporting the cashless. So. Um, we hope that you will be expanding in in Ukraine. Uh, I I actually you know my goal I would like to see more American banks on the ground. Uh, we very value uh, the Citibank, who is uh, American bank that has the local presence. But we believe that this uh, country has uh, such a, a good developed financial system that we definitely need to need to have more financial institutions from the United States participating in our market, which is very uh, clean now. Uh, after the cleanup of the banking se sector, it's very well regulated, and it has big potential to grow in all sectors, banking, non-banking, uh, and others. So uh, we really hope that we can actually work together with you on that, because I think if on the, in addition to our push for the uh, U.S. financial institutions, you can also encourage them being on the ground to actually go there, join, and it will also expand uh, uh, not only financial sphere of Ukraine, but your business. It's it's going to be uh, mutually beneficial. Thank you very much. Uh, you have nine honorary consuls. Uh, very important. You said you'd like to expand them. We have a very important one with us today from what Philadelphia area, Arena, Missouri. Quickly, Irina, thanks for being with us and your support of Ukraine. Thank you, Morgan. Um, your Excellency, as always, good to see you here and good to see your active work and engagement. Um, I know that you have to leave very soon. Um, that's why I will try to be very brief. Um, I believe that one of the biggest assets that Ukraine has in the United States, it's actually our American Ukrainian community. It's people who are Ukrainians, as you said, by birth or by choice, like Morgan. And I would like to emphasize that Morgan works for Ukraine. He's truly Ukrainian. He brought over 200 businesses to Ukraine. There are 200 members currently at the US-Ukraine Business Council. And he actually, one of those people that also shaped me in my advocacy for Ukraine and my community work for Ukraine. I look at him. And I admire, Morgan, all your work, all your achievements that you made for Ukraine, because you are Ukrainian by choice. So thank you, Morgan, for that very much. Um, people like you, people like other volunteers, help to shape and reshape image of Ukraine in the United States. You know how it used to be before, and you know how Ukraine is positioned right now on the Hill. Um, it was all done through the years and years of very hard advocacy on the Hill, talking to our representatives in Congress and Senate, um, advocating for Ukraine, for Ukrainian bills, uh, for increasing support um, in, for Ukraine, financial support, military support. And my question to you, uh, Your Excellency, would be, uh, what else can uh, we activists or people who are Ukrainians by choice and by birth 
what can we do, what more can we do to increase our engagement with the Ukrainian society um, and actually to continue building modern pro-Western, fully democratic country um, as our parents envisioned and as we would like to give to our children and to future generations. Thank you very much, Pani Irino, uh, for this excellent question. Indeed, I mean, we are lucky to have uh, a large group of Ukrainians here, uh, Ukrainian Americans, American Ukrainians, no matter how you call them, but people who have both countries in their hearts and who are uh, good members, excellent members of this society, but also uh, are willing to give back and uh, are willing to develop the relations between our two countries. And I think, you know, again, we were not uh, engaging them as much as we should have especially in these transformations that Ukraine is going through right now. So we are very grateful for uh, our diaspora here and all the uh, different committees and associations, NGOs, business associations for lobbying for Ukraine, pushing for the Ukrainian issues. But, but um, I'm thinking now, and we started discussing already with uh, you and others, how we, can, how we can engage you more back home. And there are several reforms where I think your participation, the diaspora participation would really be meaningful. One of them is the corporate governance reform. I mean, we are, we are, we are, we are doing this reform to re improve the government in all the um, major state-owned uh, uh, companies which is a very difficult task. And in order to do that, you need capable board members uh, to, to uh, execute the governmental ownership policies and to actually bring their expertise. Now, we do have this expertise here. We have excellent lawyers, uh, established businessmen. We have people who have you know, dozens of years in medical practices or education or others. So I believe if we can, in some organized fashion together, uh, put uh, a list of those because again there are competitions we are conducting them back back home but people who are here they do not have time or opportunity to follow on each individual websites uh, where is this competition what does it involve so uh, I would like and I see my mission here to make this information available and do some active recruitment if I may uh, say so and get the information who of excellent professionals uh, especially people who are experienced people who have uh, lots of years of expertise are willing actually to participate in these competitions and if and when selected be the members independent members in the boards of uh, important ukrainian companies in energy in universities in in, uh, in other areas i think that's that's where we can actually uh, put to a good use not only professional uh, experiences but also their love to ukraine because they do understand the country. And it's also very important in uh, running, running the businesses uh, to do so. And, and, you know, many others. So um, thank you for, 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 for bringing this, this up. I would like to, you know, develop it more. And uh, whoever will have ideas about it, please also contact the embassy uh, or contact us through our honorary councils. We will be putting together this uh, potential task force uh, for Ukrainian reforms uh, in, in, in all the areas. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ambassador, uh, I want to bring up several issues as we get some final comments from you uh, that are brought up to me by U.S. businesses. Number one, they're very concerned about a system of price controls that's been put in Ukraine. There's been price controls put on gas and diesel and oil and uh, energy and electricity. There's been some export uh, restrictions put on. They all hurt the free market. They're not uh, very productive. And uh, they're, they're getting very concerned about the government intervening in the uh, competitive process. Secondly, they'd like to see a lot more progress with production sharing agreements, move the process along. They'd like to see production sharing agreements for lithium, for titanium. They'd like to see more production sharing agreements for uh, oil and gas and not take 18 to 20 months, 24 months from the beginning to the end. Uh, they'd like to see the privatization move along and, uh, of course, uh, um, demonopolization, de oligarchization, and uh, work on cyber security. Uh, they, they're interested in learning more from you about these large projects that the president and you have been talking about that uh, 
may be presented for international investors. And of course, what helps U.S. investors also helps investors all over the world. So it's the whole program to help the international investment. But a lot of the restrictions that get put on, the policies go one way, then they go another way, they go up, they go down, they go forward, they're backwards. Uh, business likes constituency. They like to, to kind of have know what's going to go on and not have the rules change every six months. So those are some of the major concerns that's been brought up with me about price controls, particularly production sharing agreements, which is the instrument to bring in international investment. Public-private partnerships are great. We'd like to see that expand. Uh, uh, we'd like to see, they talked about turning the railroad stations over to private operators. There's a lot more government businesses over there that need to be turned over to private operators. And of course, we also got the problems of NAFTA gas and UZ, the railroads. U.S. agriculture has more problems with UZ than probably any other business. There needs to be some private operators there. There needs to be some privatization there. So to bring private enterprise into cooperation with the U.S. Ukraine government on uh, many of their uh, businesses and to have these public-private partnerships and to move forward on land. Yeah, they're going to open it up, but that's just a baby step. There's lots of public-private partnerships on public land where 10,000 acres could be leased for 40 years, which would bring in a lot of money. So the whole concept of public-private partnerships, turning uh, state businesses over to private operators and particularly production sharing agreements, lots more ways the government of Ukraine could cooperate with the private sector. So those are some of the uh, major issues that are brought up uh, for your uh, for your final comments. Thank you very much. Well, uh, in my short final comments, I can say that we look forward to working with you on all of these issues. It takes two to dance. So we do understand that on the one hand, we need to work more on all of this. And we finally unblocked the large privatization. So the state property fund is actually preparing the companies, uh, large companies, to uh, be re, you know, re, re put on the on the auctions. Uh, we also have uh, uh, the willingness and political will to start again discussion on all of the auctions, on the production and production sharing agreements, and all of that. But in order for that to be successful, we need sufficient and significant interest. So. We look forward to, to, to spreading this information, to sharing this information with you and getting all the companies from the US that could be interested uh, with all the information that they need in order to actually participate. Because in all the reforms, I mean, the, the best support for the reform is actually the investment that comes following the reform right after it. So if we do have the transparent auctions and we do have transparent privatization and we get very good capable investors who then develop the company and the local communities around it see that you know this investor not only came and bought the company but actually is changing the, the life of the ordinary people this is the best example and then then you have the support for other reforms easier when when you can show it so we would we would i would very much for, for the end to ask your uh, members but also people who are at the webinar for two things one is going to be on the financial and economic front, and that is please be more active. Please look at Ukraine. Please look at Ukraine now, because I believe, again, knowing all the, all the uh, uh, issues that, and all the struggles that we have, but Ukraine still is the last market in, in Europe with the double-digit potential. Uh, this decision to, to expand in Ukraine, come to Ukraine and work in Ukraine will definitely be a good decision for businesses, and it will be a good decision now. The second um, closing remark that I would like to say is actually not about business and financial. It might be a bit surprising, but you know, I, I, it's going to be about NATO. And I believe this is the only sustainable solution. I mean, uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been quite a long time after 2008 and, and uh, the meeting where we could have received the map, uh, but we're still working towards it. And I believe that this is where we would like all the businesses, especially American businesses, but also multinational businesses with headquarters here and in other capitals in, in European countries to help us uh, to do this, um, you know, last mile or a couple of miles or whatever it is 
uh, in order to join the, the this collective institution that will be the answer to a lot of security concerns in Ukraine. Because again, for the first time, the majority of population supports it. Uh, the majority of population is now clear what it is. The reforms that we have done in, in, in uh, all of the areas, but also in building the democracy in Ukraine are quite progressed. I mean, we are not at the ideal stage yet, but it's always a work in progress. Uh, but we believe, you know, us being a part of the West and us fighting for the democratic values, not only fighting for our freedom and our territorial inte integrity, but fighting for the West. Getting closer to, to, to NATO is the answer to many questions and ultimately is the uh, most effective protection, not only for Ukraine, not only for the region, but also for all the businesses that we do have in Ukraine right now and that we plan to develop in the future. So if you, this is my ask to you, if you could use all your, um, and, and I know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, your, your, your members do have uh, quite a number uh, uh, of networks in, in many capitals around the globe, uh, around the globe. Uh, please, um, you know, put that on your uh, agenda about Ukraine as well. Well, thank you very much. Uh, again, we want to say the business community is very happy to see uh, someone with your economic and business background now in the ambassadorship. And that we can also call you an economic ambassador. And we think this is very critical because we have to communicate from the, the association and our members to you. And then you have to communicate to the decision makers in Kiev. And we got to get them to take everybody more seriously and get some answers back and help them to resolve the issues. So it's going to take a whole triumvirate of the businesses, their associations, the embassy, and the decision makers in Ukraine. And one of the problems has been as to getting response and, and feedback from the decision makers in Ukraine. So you can be a very uh, important part of that process. So again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. We look forward to having many businesses in to see you and we will send in more reports and follow up on them because they're out there every day. They're fighting for their own life. They're fighting for more jobs and they're fighting for the benefits of their employees. And so they're the ones that know what's going on. They know where the problems are. And like you said, we also want them to propose solutions, how to resolve these issues so that it becomes a win for everybody. So again, thank you very much. We look forward to having another webinar with you and having more meetings with you in this whole important area of economic and business development to create a stronger, better, wealthier, uh, Ukraine that enters uh, in a stronger basis the world economy and the world uh, field of nations. Thank you very much. And now we'll turn to uh, the panelists for some of their final comments. And again, thank you very much, Ambassador. Okay, let's turn now to uh, uh, Van Yider for any final comments from, uh, from you. Yeah, thanks, Morgan. Um... Thank you, Ambassador Markarova uh, and everybody else. It's a pleasure to be on a panel with you all. Uh, I would just reiterate again that uh, the role that you play, Ambassador, is, is important. Companies like ours need, need the voice of, of, of important people and to solve these issues. Uh, I think Ukraine, I think there's multiple truths always in, in the world. And sometimes we as humans think there's only one truth. And the truth is that Ukraine has advanced amazingly well in the last 20 years. Ukraine has made amazing advancements. It's also true that there's a lot more to do, right? I mean, that is true. It's, it's, it's true that there's some uh, Ukrainian government officials that are not doing the best for the country and, and in the bureaucracy. But then it's also true that there are many, many public servants in Ukraine, including uh, Ambassador Markarova, who are, are committing their, their time and resources in life to try to help move Ukraine forward. So I think it's incumbent upon us, kind of the people that are you know, part of this, to continue to support and uplift and recognize those that are doing the right thing and not just kind of generalize and say, oh, Ukraine's not doing well, Ukraine's doing great. You know, it's, 
we need to be more thoughtful. And it's true in the United States as well and there, any other country, right? Let's, let's be more um, sophisticated in, in how we evaluate issues and, and policies and people and governments and so on. And so anyway, I, I just want to leave this has made an unbelievable progress and there's more to be done. And we need to support those people in Ukraine that are doing the right things for the right reasons and, and uh, get more of those in the culture of that uh, burgeoning in, in Ukraine. And hopefully that'll be good for everyone. So anyway, it's a, a pleasure to be here today with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. And thank you, Ambassador. And I mean, what more can be said after what, what Van just shared? I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I think what struck me from the ambassador's comments, I mean, there were many things, but it's that companies that are investing in Ukraine, we're not just investing in our facilities, we're investing in the communities that are around our facilities as well. And our employees are Ukrainian, right? I, I mean, that is what we are investing in. It's, it's our employees that are Ukrainian. We have a desire to see Ukraini, Ukrainian employees do better, Ukraine do better. Um, and our goal is you know, to work with you, Ambassador, to help bring concrete solutions here. And in turn, our employees in Ukraine are doing the same thing from their vantage point in Ukraine. And so the more that we can be sharing similar messages um, and that's on us and that's on you to be doing the exact same thing um, in partnership so that we are delivering those messages and hoping that we can help make some concrete progress. Um, so don't hesitate to call on us as you are working on your economic diplomacy. Um, we will do our part here as well. Um, I think that there has been a ton of advancement I think part of the challenge with everything that is going on with COVID and the recovery is ensuring that focus remains where it needs to be and it not getting lost in everything that is out there. So, you know, we will stay connected with you. Please don't hesitate to reach out to Morgan or to us as individual companies. You can see there was a ton of interest today. So use that, right? That is, my, that is my request. Use that and let us be helpful to you as you're going through this process. Thank you so much for your time today. Okay, Sarah, you're one of the companies that keep telling Ukraine uh, what needs to be improved to get a cashless society. We are glad when companies are very upfront and willing to tell them what needs to be done. So your final comments. I think that a lot has been said already. And so just to follow on what Stephanie said is to use companies like us that are in Ukraine as your ambassadors to attract more investment. I mean, as I told you before, our, our uh, business has really grown considerably. Ukraine is a success story and one that we like would like to replicate in other markets in Central Asia. So I think the continued work with, with, with the agencies, with the National Bank, it's quite apparent from the, your Madam Ambassador all the way up to the President's office where we see our business opportunity quite open in Ukraine. And we just wanna continue that relationship with you. And again, please call on us. We, we could be your best advocates to attract more US companies to Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. And now to Arena, thank you very much. Uh, the US-Ukraine Business Council has always counted the Ukrainian community in, in Pennsylvania as one of our best friends. We've been Thank working you. with you over 15 years, the Ukrainian Federation of America, and we're very glad uh, to have you as the representative of Ukraine there in, in Pennsylvania. And there's a lot more we can do uh, together between the U.S.-Ukraine business community and, and groups like the Ukrainian Federation and you and, and others. So thank you for your very strong support, your kind words, your final comments. Thank you. I just want to thank all the participants and all the businesses who do not afraid to invest in Ukraine, who do not afraid to actually come to our country and to help our country economically. Um, every country has its own issues. We are not the country that has the only economy with problems. Even the United States has its own issues. Uh, the Israel has its own issues, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, we all have to look forward one step after another. And uh, with that comment, I would like to actually uh, comment on the question from Faina Yofe um, about cooperation of Ukraine um, with Jewish community 
And yes, absolutely, we have a full commitment, full friendship uh, to continue working with our Jewish community organizations uh, because we have a joint pain, joint memories, joint history about Holocaust and Holodomor. It's something that unites us. And uh, we have to be together in this fight. We have to be together supporting each other. And absolutely, I, I'm sure that Ambassador will actually confirm that um, this is the full intentions of Ukraine to continue working together in that uh, sphere. Additional comment was about Congresswoman, newly elected Congresswoman Victoria Sparks. And yes, um, actually we have a good friend in Congress, Brian Fitzpatrick, who is co-chair of Ukrainian Congress and Caucus, who made a really great introduction to Victoria um, about Ukraine, about work of the Ukrainian community organizations, about the embassy. And I know that the embassy already uh, scheduling meeting with Congresswoman. Um, next time I will be on the Hill, I will have a meeting with her. So yes, we will continue working with our representatives in Congress and in Senate uh, to continue our advocacy for Ukraine. So I really thank all of you for your support in every, every line for Ukraine, because Ukraine is a strategic partner of United States. And we have to remember that our interests as Americans and as Ukrainians, they align. So we have actually strategic partnership that just has to expand and expand and just become bigger, stronger, and more productive. I think the ambassador is still there. Thank you for your comments about European integration uh, and about NATO. You can be sure the business community is behind you 100%. And uh, you, uh, you're on the forefront of the fight for democracy. You're on the forefront of the fight against Western democracies. So uh, you can count on the business community and uh, the problems with Belarus and others. So uh, now that you're still on, we. Uh, we're glad to have any other final comments in the whole area of foreign policy and foreign diplomacy and what you'd like to see from the United States. Uh, any other final comments from you in this whole uh, area of diplomacy and foreign policy and strengthening the defense support for Ukraine uh, from the United States? Morgan, I actually stayed to listen to all the final comments, but I really have to run. So just okay. to say goodbye to everyone and did not want to leave uh, without saying it. So thank you, everyone. But OK, we'll take up some of those subjects later then. OK, I just want to say to everybody in the business community, uh, I hope you saw the very uh, open message. Please get your comments and reports into us and uh, we're, uh, work with us and we'll work with the embassy and uh, use this new energy to uh, help resolve these issues so that we can move uh, U.S. business, international business, and the economy of Ukraine forward. Thanks to Stephanie and Sarah, Arena Van, for all your strong support and uh, best wishes from the U.S.-Ukraine Business Council. And as we say, full speed ahead. Take care. Thank you.